Dear God in heaven, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, dear Lord, for giving us your word, dear Lord, which we shall reflect on today. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless this service, dear Lord. We ask you to bless this time we have together. And we pray that your word may not fall, dear Lord, flat. But we pray that it will motivate us and encourage us and remind us of your power and your might and your character in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all these things. May we all say Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Our scripture for today, which was read so eloquently by Reverend Dr. Louise Beeman, comes from Psalm 121. Oh, before I read the scripture, I, I would be remiss if I did not thank Reverend Dr. Amen. Beeman for the job well done she did with the Black History Program yes, last month. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Beeman. Yes, thank you. It's wonderful that uh, she takes that on and reminds us that before there was American history, there was what? Black, Black history. history. Glory to God. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, our text for today uh, is Psalm 121, which reads, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you uh, by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep you. Uh, he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. I would like to take a moment of your time today to preach from the title, Who Can I Run To? Who Can I Run To? Well, sisters, I was, I was born in the 80s. Um, <laughs> some of you were in high school in the 80s. Some of you were graduating college, getting married. I was being born. I was born in the 80s, and it meant that I grew up in the 90s. So that means that I grew up, was in the 90s music, and 90s music had an impact on me. If it had an impact on me like it had on you, you might remember the group Escape. Yep. Yep. And so really, interestingly enough, Escape got their start in the church with vocal training from Reverend Randolph Scott. Soon, their talented group got noticed from secular commercial labels, and eventually mega producer Jermaine Dupri got a hold of them, and the rest is history. The thing about growing up in the church and being trained in the church is that it's hard to leave your roots behind no matter where life takes you. It's deep down inside of you. Uh, there's a still voice reminding you of your origin. No matter where you might go, it's there. And it comes up in unexpected ways, even if you might have fallen away from the church. Deep down inside, you still hear that yearning. You still hear that still voice. It still is a part of you. One of Escape's hit records was a song titled, Who can I run to? Some of you might remember this song. The song went like this. It said, as I stand there contemplating on the right thing to decide, will I take the wrong direction all my life? Where will I go? What lies ahead of me? I have a strong determination, and I'm not afraid of change. I've yet to find that someone who can who would care to satisfy me, to stay right by me? Who can I run to to share this empty space? Who can I run to when I need love? Who can I run to to fill this empty space with laughter? Who can I run to when I need love? You know, the interesting part about these lyrics is that with just a little bit of tweaking, it could be a gospel song. Because it poses an important question. Who can I run to? Who can I run to? Who can you run to when you feel alone? Who can you run to when you feel abandoned? Who can you run to when you feel betrayed? Who can you run to when you feel lost? Who can you run to when you feel persecuted? Who can you run to when you feel abused? Who can you run to when you feel forgotten? Who can you run to when you feel confused? Who can you run to when you feel like you've given them the best you've got? 
-hmm. Yet, they still seem ungrateful and unsupportive. Mm -hmm. Who can you run to when you feel you cannot carry on? Psalm 121 begins with a question from the author. The psalmist, who appears to be in a moment of difficulty, poses this question. Where does my help come from? Another way he could have put it is, who can I run to? The remainder of the verses in the psalm answer that question while detailing the nature of God. The answer is that his help comes from God. Right. However, the nature of God goes beyond just a helper. God is also reliable. God is a protector and God is our savior. And God's love extends to multiple areas of the psalmist's life and to ours. And I'm here to tell you today who you can run to. I'm here to tell you today that you are not alone, that you are not abandoned, that you are not left for dead, that God is still in your life and that God is still with you. As we read Psalm 121, we are reminded that it describes the character of God the God whom we serve. We serve a good God who was a helper, who was reliable, a protector, and a savior. And today, we discuss the character of God. And as we examine the character of God, let us be reminded of how much God deserves our praise and our worship because of his love for us. First, we will discuss God as helper. Secondly, we will discuss the reliability of God. Third, we will discuss God as our protector. And finally, we will look at God as our Savior. I just want to make it clear today uh, that you don't have to run to the bottle. I want to make it clear today that you don't have to run to the gentleman's club. Can we keep it real? All right, brother. I want to make it clear today that you don't have to run to drugs and drug addiction. You don't have to run to the bar. You don't have to run to anger. You don't have to run to gambling. You don't have to run to adultery. You don't have to run to fornication. You don't have to run to sin when you need love. Well, well. You simply must run to God because God is your helper. Psalm 121 begins with an immediate question and answer. Psalms 121 stands at one and two says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and her earth. Here we have a characterization of God as helper who comes to the aid of the psalmist in his time of need. Throughout the Bible, we can find plenty of examples of God as helper. But do you know why? The psalmist has to look up. Do you know why the psalmist has to look up? Right. The psalmist has to look up because he had been looking down. Oh, well. And I don't know if anyone here has ever looked down before. Mm. Look down because maybe you were not down. Look down because you've been discouraged. Look down because you've lost hope. Mm. The psalmist, for whatever reason, is looking down. Mm. All sorts of things can cause you to look down. Health crisis will have you looking down. Mm. Financial crisis will have you looking down. Mm. Relationship problems will have you looking down. Yeah. Problems on the job will have you looking down. Problems even with church folks, believe it or not, right. will have you looking down. Who can you run to in those moments when you're looking down? Who did Paul and Silas run to? A story that demonstrates the help of God can be found in Acts 16. In this passage of scripture, Paul and Silas are arrested, not because they did what was wrong, but they were arrested because they did what was right. Mm -hmm. They were arrested for their preaching and teaching of the gospel. And while they were in prison, Paul and Silas did something that seemed uh, rather odd. They started singing songs of worship and praise towards God. Right. You know, the fact that Paul and Silas could worship God in prison tells me that we can worship God in the fellowship room. Amen. Right, amen. Amen. 
glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I thought everybody started clapping for that, but it's okay. It's okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to praise him in the fellowship room, and I will also praise him in the prison. I will praise him uh, lost in the jungle. I will praise him on the airplane. I don't care where we are located. We can always praise the Lord. Amen. Paul and Silas were in prison in a Roman prison. I heard one preacher say, that the prison that Paul and Silas were in makes our prisons seem like vacation resorts. They were in an awful prison. Okay, they were chained up. There were no bathroom breaks. You know what happened when you had to go to the bathroom? You just went right there. You had to sit in it. You had to stay in other people's mess. You barely got fed anything. There was rats and critters and all sorts of stuff crawling around. It was dark. There was no light. There was a pungent smell. It was a terrible place to be. Cold, dark, dirty, smelly, alone, hungry. And there Paul and Silas were, not because they did what was wrong, but because they did what was right. And they were in the prison, and they were still singing songs of praise and worship to God. So again, I tell you, we can be in the fellowship hall and still praise God. Amen. Amen. Paul and Silas used this opportunity to praise God. And while they were praising, suddenly their chains broke and the prison doors opened. And this opportunity provided them another opportunity to minister the, to the, the gospel to the guards that were in prison. God has helped Paul and Silas by providing a way of freedom. And in turn, they have helped other people by learning about the power and greatness of God. Right. But Paul and Silas, even in captivity choose to worship God. Even in prison, they choose to worship God. And like Paul and Silas and the psalmist, we can look up and worship to God knowing that our help comes from God. That your condition is temporary. That your circumstance will not last forever. That help is already on the way. Amen. We thank God. Our help it's in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Brothers and sisters, don't forget where your real help comes from. Your real help comes from God. Women will let you down. Men will let you down. Men will break your heart. Women will break your heart. Women will abandon you. Men will abandon you. But God is a God who is always reliable. Always. In fact, Psalms 121 continues with the characterization of God by telling us that God indeed is reliable. Psalms 121, stanza 3 and 4 says, He will not let your foot be moved. He keeps you. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Here we are reassured that we can depend on God because he does not sleep. This implies that God is always available. Thus, God is reliable. God does not sleep, which means that God stays, God stays woke. Reverend. <laughs> Amen. Let's yes, go to God. Yeah, God, God. God stays woke. Amen. Go ahead to God. You know, it's interesting. So many political figures are saying, don't be woke. Don't be woke. It's wrong to be woke. The woke, angry mob, it's all this sorts of things. And they've taken the word woke, woke which really was a colloquialism for having, uh, having a critical consciousness. And they've made it such a bad thing. And it's, uh, don't be woke. And I, I keep, every time I hear them say this, I wonder to myself, what do they want, Reverend Beeman? <laughs> do they want us all just to go back to sleep? Well, Is that what they want? We go back to sleep so they can do their tricky games and all sorts of exploitation and nobody calls them to the carpet for it. Well, I'm not going back to sleep. All right, yeah, you. wrongdoers love leaders mm -hmm. who are asleep. Mm -hmm. Nobody to call them out. Leaders that just want photo ops and pictures to post, but nobody to ask them about gentrification in Detroit. My Lord. My Lord. For nobody to ask them about reparations for the citizens of Detroit 
who had property taxes stolen from them, and they never got the money. But they don't want to hear that. They just want to take a picture with them and let them go in their merry way. Yeah, they love leaders who are asleep. But we ain't going back to sleep because we serve a God that stays woke. Amen? Amen? Amen, church. Amen. God is good. God is good. God never sleeps. God is reliable. He's reliable at 5 a.m. He's reliable at noon. He's reliable at 8 p.m. He's reliable when you are asleep. He's reliable when you are at work. He's reliable when you are awake. God's reliable when you are in the shower. He's reliable when you're brushing your teeth. He's reliable when you're eating dinner. He's reliable all the time. Ask Elijah. With Elijah's declaration, uh, God does not sleep, it's significant because the Israelites were surrounded by people that worship false gods. And in the midst of these false gods, they do sleep. The false gods sleep. This is mentioned in 1 Kings 18. In this chapter, the prophet Elijah challenges the prophets of a false god known as, some call him Baal, I call him Baal. Elijah and the prophets of Baal both try to summon fire from heaven. Mm -hmm. The prophets of Baal dance and yell for fire. Mm -hmm. Elijah says, they are making all this noise to, to wake up by all. Of course it does not work. These prophets fail. But when Elijah summons fire from heaven, it happens instantly. Because Elijah serves the true and living God who is not fake and who does not sleep. God was always available to Elijah and likewise God is always available to us. God is not only available to us on Sunday morning at church. All right, and y'all all look good right now. Praise the Lord. You look good. It's such a blessing, Reverend Beeman, to serve a church where folks look so good. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. You all look good. Glory to God. But I want you to know uh, that God is there for you even when you're not looking good on Sunday morning. Amen. God is there for you when you don't want nobody to see you. God is still there for you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God's not only available to us right now on Sunday morning, but God is available to us in the early morning, the afternoon, late at night. God is always available because God is reliable. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They renew every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you uh, with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. You know, some people's problem in their life is that they keep running to people who are unreliable. That's some folks' problem. And deep down inside, you hope that they will change. Deep down inside, you hope that one day you can depend on them, but over and over again, they let you down. Meanwhile, a lot of people have folks in their life who might hardly ever let them down. However, these such folks are often take it for granted and they are looked over for the fleeting. My father has a saying. My father used to say, you shouldn't have to eat the whole cow to know that it's beef. That's what he used to say. <laughs> All you need is one bite, maybe two, but not the whole thing. Maya Angelou put it this way. She said that when a person tells you who they are, believe them the first time. And God has told us who God is by being dependable for us time and time again. When you feel you can't depend on anyone else, you can always depend on God because God is reliable and God is also a protector. If you watch TV for more than 15 minutes, you have surely seen a State Farm commercial. <laughs> State Farm's mission statement, I wondered, I said, what is their mission statement? And on our website, they, said, they say this, for 100 years, 100 years, Deacon means, which means that State Farm still isn't as old as Second Baptist. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise God. I <laughs> said, for 100 years, the mission of State, uh, State Forum has and continues to be to help people manage the risk of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. This mission statement goes well with their catchphrase, 
which is like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Now, I don't know how reliable State Farm is or isn't, but I know who is truly there all the time, who is truly reliable, who is truly there and even better than a good neighbor. And that person is the Alpha and the Omega, Yahweh, God himself. God is a protector, brothers and sisters. The uh, God who helps us and the God who's reliable also protects us. Psalm 121, stanza 5 through 6 says this, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at, at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day or the moon by night. Here the psalmist emphasizes God's protection during the day and night. At all times, God is watching over humanity. A story that illustrates the protection of God can be found in Daniel 6. In this passage of scripture, Daniel was thrown into a lion's den as punishment for praying to God. However, the lions do not harm Daniel because God protects him by closing the mouth of the lions. In a difficult moment, God protected Daniel because he trusted in God. God put all his faith and trust, Daniel put all his faith and trust in God, and the result was protection. And like Daniel, we should put our faith in God during difficult moments and believe God will protect us. I, I know some of, us, some of us know what it's like to, um, to have a lion in our life. Uh, maybe it's a person in your life. Uh, maybe they don't like what you do. Maybe they don't, they don't like how you look. Maybe your face reminds them of somebody who they didn't like in their childhood. But for, for, some, for, for some whatever reason, uh, they just want to devour you. They want to hurt you. They want to destroy you. And you, you, you can't really figure out what it is they have against you. Anybody ever experienced that before in life? Anybody know what that's like to have lions in your life? Lions in your life and somebody just want to devour you, just want to tear you to shreds. You don't even know what the deal is. What do I even do to this person? What do I ever do to them? And they just want to tear you to shreds. You don't even know why a lions in your life. And those are lions that you know. As other lions... That, that, that hate your guts and you don't even know it. Some of us have been in lion's dens and we didn't even know it. They had a plan for you before you even entered that meeting. They had something they wanted to do. But God, before you even got there, shut the mouth of the lion because you knew that God was your protector and you had faith. So God protected you from the evildoers in your life. I know, I know you've experienced it. You want to know how I know? Because you're still here. I know God brought you through it because you're still here. Psalm 91, 1 through 2 says, You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. God protects you in, in numerous ways. I believe God hides your keys from you sometimes. I do. Because God, God knows that something's waiting for you if you leave when you were planning to leave. I believe it. I believe God will hide my keys from me and I'll look for them all the time and I'll say, where are my keys? And then I'll finally find them and I might be a little upset but i say, you know what? Lord knows what was waiting for me if I left when I wanted to leave. Sometimes God prompts someone to spark a convo with you in the most inconvenient time. Anybody been through that? You're trying to go somewhere and somebody, or somebody spots you, they want to come talk to you, and, and it's, a, it's the most inconvenient time, okay? Now, I just want to say as a caveat, I've never experienced this with a Second Baptist member, okay? <laughs> never, ever. Have I ever experienced this from a member of Second Baptist? But there are other folks who ain't members of Second Baptist who can kind of get to you at an inconvenient time and you end up talking to them and it can push your schedule back. But God might have sent that person at you at that moment to have that conversation because God knew that something harmful was going to cross your path if that person didn't hold you up. See, God was protecting us in ways that are seen and unforeseen, ways that are known and ways that are unknown. So I thank God that God has protected me. I thank God that God has protected you. I know I'm here today before you only by the grace of God. 
And if we can all be humble enough to admit it, that's why we're all here today. Yeah. It is only by the grace of God that we sit here today. It wasn't because you were so perfect. It wasn't because you were so intelligent. It wasn't because you were so clever. No, it's because God is so good. Who could I run to? God. God is there for us. He is our helper. He is reliable. And he is our protector. But God is also our savior. Psalm 121, 7 through 8 says, The Lord will keep you from all evil. And he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. Which simply means forever. God provides us with salvation from any evil because of his Lord love towards humanity. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus displays the salvation God has granted humanity. Through Jesus Christ, all of us have the opportunity to follow a life of righteousness with the hope of spending eternity with God. Jesus declare, declares throughout the Gospels, through him there is salvation for all humanity. In John 11, Jesus says, he is the resurrection and the life. And Jesus, there is salvation for everyone who confesses Jesus as Lord. All right. God is a savior because he loves humanity and we can have access to salvation when we choose to follow after Jesus. Romans 10, 9 puts it plainly. It says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Psalm 121 outlines the character of God. And I want us to know today that God is a helper. God has helped Paul and Silas in the difficult moment, but God will help us also when we maintain worship to him. Psalm 121 emphasizes that God is reliable. And like Elijah, we can rely on God because God is always available to us. God is a protector, and God protected Daniel, and God will do the same for us when we put all of our faith in God. And finally, God provides salvation for all of humanity. Jesus died and rose again, so we may have access to salvation. And when we confess Jesus is Lord, this is possible and so much more. Mm. So who can you run to? I want you to know today that you can run to Jesus. Right, who can you run to? Mm. I want you to know today that you can run to the name that is above all names. Right. Who can you run to? I want you to know today that you can run to God, the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Who can you run to? I want you to know today that God is there for you when you feel alone. Right. Who can you run to? I want you to know today that God is there to avenge you when you feel like you've been betrayed by everyone. Who can you run to? Uh, uh, God is there uh, and to find you uh, and put you back on the right path, even when you feel you have uh, lost your way. Uh, who can you run to? God is there to liberate you when you've been persecuted and you have been oppressed. Uh, who uh, can you run to, Brother Evans, when God uh, is, is there to defend you when you've been beaten up and abused. Uh, right. Who can you run to? Uh, God will always remember you when you feel forgotten by other humans. Who can you run to? God will love you and you don't have to earn it. Who can you run to when you feel you can't go on? God is there to carry you. I want you to know today that if you've never run to him before, if you've never run to God before, why not run to him today? You can run to God, and God will take care of you like no other. Maybe there's somebody here today right. who has not yet done this confession. Why not do it today? Mm. Who can you run to? God will provide not just in this temporal life, but in the next life for eternity. Right. Who can you run to, church? 
run to God and don't ever forget it. Amen. If you're here today and you have not yet confessed, but you do believe in Jesus Christ, I want you to confess to him today with your heart and your mouth. Come forward today and receive our Lord, the one who you can always run to. The doors of this church are open to you. Glory to God. Amen.